All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I am Tanya Rose. I am excited to kick off our second week in our Focus Forward series 2023. And this is so exciting. So Cheryl and I are tag teaming on tonight's um, training. And we're just really excited because we're really passionate about this um, particular topic. And we work on this topic a lot because we just know how important it is. So we're excited to share it with you guys. And I want to remind you guys um, of our focus mission, okay? So our focus mission statement, um, the mission of this Focus Forward series is to help you grow in your skills, clarity, and confidence so you can take action in your business and see increased results towards your goals, okay? So always remember that um, what you focus on grows, and without a focus, it's, it's hard to you know, paint the picture of what you're wanting. So it all starts with focus on that. So that is our focus mission statement. And um, Cheryl is going to go in and she's going to um, talk to you guys a little bit. We're going to kick off our training, but she's going to talk to you a little bit about why we had you start on your contact list last week and what that has to do with connection to this, um, to tonight's training. So Cheryl, do you want to go over that with them. Sure thing. So one of the things we went over briefly last week um, in the introduction to this whole Focus uh, Forward series, and we had a lot to cover last week. So I know that some things have been clarified in the Voxer group. We'll talk about the Voxer group after the recording is over. Um, but that, that contact list of 100 people. So tonight's training, you guys, is all about lead generation. So why is lead generation important in our business? Um, that is how we meet the people. That is how we creatively think, who do we know? How can we know more people? Because we're in the people business, right? And so, um, you know, there's lots of sayings that I can go over, like faces take you places. Mary Kay said, you know, if you're out of bookings, you're out of business. Well, how do we get bookings? We have to know people. And so that's why we're so excited is because as Tanya said, um, through our experience in this business, we know how important it is to always have an influx of what we call leads or new names or new people into our business so that we can continue to move forward. This is a focus forward series. Having new people to work with will continue to move you forward and not allow you to feel like you are stuck. So if you have been in the business for a while and you are feeling like you are stuck, the key to that is new people. If you are new in the business, the key to this is understanding how to work the circles that you know and then step outside of that. So we're going to start with the circles that you know. We call that the sphere of influence, the SOI, your sphere of influence. That is directly tied into your workbook about the, um, the 100 contact list. And so whether you are a new consultant or you really feel like you haven't tapped out your sphere of influence or you're a very social person involved in a lot of things that is continually adding to your sphere of influence, this is a great place to start. And so we had you commit last week to how many people you wanted to put on that 100 contact list. And I recommend that you continue to add to that. Have it with you. People pop into our minds so much that it's nice to just have it like, oh my gosh, I forgot about her or him or whoever it is and get them on the list because we don't want people to slip through the cracks. And when we are organized and we have them down, that's the best way to be able to track them and make sure that we are, um, are organized in our thoughts because life happens and life is crazy, right? And so the sphere of influence, it's a very easy concept. These are people that you know. These are people in your family. These are your friends. These are your coworkers, um, your church group, your mom's group, your like whatever you are involved in. Like these are people that you're like, yes, I, I know them. Whether you know them on a daily basis, like they're super close to you or whether they are an acquaintance, right? You went to middle school with them. They were your fourth grade teacher. Like really expand your thinking when it comes to the sphere of influence, okay? Don't sell yourself short to the five people you talk to most often and then say, I don't know anybody else. You have done a lot of life. You know a lot of people. People know you. If they know your parents, they probably know you, right? And so you may not know them, but they may know who you are. So 
my encouragement is to really think outside of the box when it comes to that 100 contact list and continue to build on that. Of course, the first people that come to our mind are the people that are closest to us, but do not stop there. Really challenge yourself to think, who else? Who else? Who else? Okay. So um, like I said, new consultants, that is the one place that we start. We practice on our friends and family, and then we learn how to branch out from there. And you're going to learn those branching out techniques right here in the same training. And those of you that are a little bit tapped out on your sphere of influence, you're going to learn, okay, what do I do next? Or what, you know, how, how can I grow from here? Because um, again, I feel stuck or I just not really sure exactly what techniques that I can do. Or some of you have moved to a new place and you don't really know people. That happens too. Or if that's going to be in your near future, that's a really important thing to understand. Tanya did that several years ago, moved to San Antonio, Texas from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and did not know anybody. And when I say anybody, she did not know anybody. So that is why we are passionate about this lead generation training is because we have done it for years and years and years. This is how we continue to have new blood come into our business to keep us afloat, keep us moving forward, because that's our focus, right? And so that is how you're going to do your 100 contact list. But here's what I will just caution. Never stop at your contact list, your sphere of influence. Your sphere of influence is a great place to start and to continue to add to, but it is not going to make your business a successful business and maybe what you think you want a successful business to be. No business out there that has long-term success has built their business off of friends and family and the people that they know. If you think of your favorite dentist, your favorite doctor, your favorite boutique, your favorite any kind of business, restaurant, um, anything, they are marketing themselves to attract the public that only knows them as that professional business owner. I only know my dentist as my dentist. I was not connected to my dentist personally before he's my dentist, right? And so I will refer anybody to my dentist. I will refer anybody to all these favorite businesses because I have that professional relationship with them. And I want you to view your Mary Kay business as the same. So as we teach you these techniques of meeting people outside of your sphere of influence, that is really when you make this pivot and this transition to um, that long-term next step success, right? These people that you meet through these other means of lead generation are going to only know you as their Mary Kay Beauty consultant. That is when the magic starts to happen. You have a professional relationship with them that is very different than the relationship that you have as the Mary Kay consultant, but also middle school classmate, daughter, uh, best friend, you know, ex-girlfriend, whatever, like whatever this relationship is, there's kind of a, there's a past that goes along with that can, that can either be super supportive or not supportive. Well, when you meet people through these different means that we're going to teach you, the game kind of changes. Then it just becomes a, are they interested in what you have or are they not? Are they connected with you? Are they not? And, and then those um, relationships become that beauty consultant and customer relationship that is gold and you hang on to those. So that's what we're excited about. So contact list, don't overlook it. Don't um, think that it's not going to help, but that's one means. And then we're going to teach you now we're going to go into some other ways. Okay. And so I think that that was all I had to say about that. But before I hand it back over to Tanya, as you guys know, we have a secret word every single week, right? And this is part of submitting your homework and you put it on that page two of your workbook and week two, where it says secret word, your secret word of the week is connection connection. So write that down and make sure that you're submitting your secret word with your homework next Tuesday so that we know, especially if you're watching the recording, that you have watched this whole thing and you have provided that secret word and you haven't just completed the assignments. That's why that secret word is there. So that's your sphere of influence. I'm going to hand it over to Tanya, who's going to get into our next two topics. And you guys, again, this is going to be so exciting. You've probably done some of this. You might not have. So um, please, be present, take notes, really take this in. What can I do? What speaks to me? Um, let me get Tanya on here for you. And she is going to get it going. Okay. So it looks like I'm back. Okay, guys. So 
One of my most favorite ways to generate leads is by doing lead jars or fish bowls or um, lead boxes, um, whatever you guys call them. The end result is the same, right? It is where you place something, a bowl, a box, a jar at a business. It collects names for you while you are working or living your life or watching your kids or at, you're at basketball games or you're on date night with your husband or whatever you're doing. It is collecting names while you are not around for you. Okay. You may already be doing that. It may be working great for you. You may have heard this so many times that you're starting to think maybe they're onto something. Maybe I should really put these jars together. Or you're like, wow, that's genius. I've never heard of that before. So no matter where you're at, this is going to be beneficial to you because there could be something that you're not doing, but you are doing the jars, but something that maybe I say that you're like, I didn't think of that, or I didn't think of this. Okay. So jars, Cheryl is going to pull up a picture, what I am talking about, what a jar looks like. And you're going to see um, a bunch of jars. Okay. So these are what my jars look like. And this is what I have trained my units on. And then Cheryl has also done this as well. So we pass it along, right? We pass it on. And so this is what they look like. Now you're probably wondering, why are there so many jars? Well, the importance about jars is that you place enough to accumulate enough names so you have something to work with when you pick them up. If you just put one jar out, you are relying on that one jar to be able to produce enough names for you, which may not happen, right? It may be a slow business. Maybe not a lot of people are entering. Maybe it's just not the crowd for you. And so you go weeks and weeks and weeks having a jar there producing nothing, okay? But if you have 10 to 15 jars spread out within your area, then each of those jars are collecting names for you. Some may have five, some may have three, some may have 12, eventually it adds up. So if you think about it this way, you could have 30 names of people that you never probably would have met or ran into, but they happen to walk into those businesses and enter their information to get a pampering session, a beauty session, um, a microdermabrasion session, whatever you want to call it, they enter into these businesses and they enter their names. So you go from having zero leads, knowing zero people, to having 30 names, possibly in a month or more. It can fluctuate based off of the businesses you are or that you're putting your jars at. But it I mean, I don't know. Can anybody get excited about that? Can we like raise hands if you had 30 names just placed in a jar for you that you did nothing to get except place a jar in a business? Like, is that something you could get excited about? Because sometimes, let's be real, sometimes we are nervous to talk to people. Sometimes we don't want to talk to people. Sometimes we are not out enough to talk to people because maybe we work a full-time job or maybe we're doing other things that doesn't allow us to really get in front of the amount of people that we want to be around. But then you have this jar that is doing that for you, producing that activity for you, okay? So as Cheryl said earlier, I did move from Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I knew a ton of people born and raised um, was out here for gosh, 35 years, went to high school, middle school, all that elementary school sports. My kids had sports. I, I mean, I knew a ton of people. So I was able to build my business off my sphere of influence as a start until I ran out and exhausted that list. And then I was like, how else can I meet other people? So even when I lived here, I was doing that as well in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But then when I moved to San Antonio, Texas, I knew nobody. I knew nobody. I don't have any family out there. And my husband only has his best friend and his wife. And that's it. So I literally, it was like the world was my oyster. 
I was like, nobody knows me and I know nobody, but I know how to start that momentum. And that is by placing these jars and I had 15 to 20 out and I placed them all around the area that I was in within 15 minutes of where I lived. I kind of just did this circle all the way around me within 15 minutes. And I was very, very committed to making sure those jars were out, checking on them and swapping them out and doing all that fun stuff, okay? So here is um, some tips for you. I mean, we're, we are going to send resources to you guys as far as what does the, um, what does the label look like, right? So you can see Cheryl's holding her jar up right there and she has a label, she has entries, she has a clip that clips them on there. She has some shred in there and then she has a couple of papers in there. Now, I always recommend put a couple of papers with your information and drop them in there because nobody ever wants to be the first person to enter anything. Sometimes people are like, but it, once they start seeing papers in there, they're like, oh, I'm going to enter too, okay? So you have kind of like two dummy um, entries in there. And it looks nice. It's neat. It's simple. Um, I do recommend that whatever you put together to leave out a business, make sure it's not big. Make sure it doesn't take up a lot of space. Because a lot of times when you walk into businesses, they already have a ton of stuff. So yours needs to be something that is simple. Um, that won't take up a lot of room, but that will get people's attention because it's pretty, right? It's just a pink bow, pink shred that says, I'm pretty, enter me, look at me and enter this, okay? So people fill this out and they, they stick that in there. Now, another thing I do recommend is always have a jar that you can switch out. And another consultant taught this to me, which I was a like, genius because I would check on my jar, go pick up my entries. And there I was, um, you know, taking out all the entries in the business so I could leave my jar there another week. Well, she said, why don't you just take in another jar, grab the one that has the entries, put the, you know, blank jar in there with your two, you know, dummy entries and walk out and you can do that in your car or whatever. I was like, oh my gosh, so smart, right? And so it's by doing the process, you find systems that work really good for you that make it easier. So now I just walk in and say, hey, just here to check on my jar. Thank you guys so much. Swap, swap and walk out. Okay, see you next week. That's literally the gist of like, that's my entire spill when I pick them up, okay? And um, so that is another tip is have one that you can consistently swap. Okay. So, um, so that is a tip for that. Now, where are some of the locations that I tend to look at? So you guys, anything that's like a family owned business, not a big corporation. So think about like mom and pop places, flower shops, popcorn places. Um, you know, maybe you have like a grooming a dog grooming place, um, pet grooming place, um, nail salons, boutiques, um, some restaurants, some mom and pop restaurants too. So think of those things, you know, um, where you can place your jar at. So I avoid big um, companies, you know, like I wouldn't go to Red Lobster and put my jar there because anytime you think of something corporate, they always have to go to somebody higher up. And usually they don't even know how to get a hold of who that would be in charge or higher up. So, but when you deal with a locally owned business, they usually are there at their business and they usually like are able to give you that yes or no right away for that. Um, so those are the types of places that I look for are small businesses, you know, um, other small businesses. That's really what I look for. I mean, it could be, you know, bridal bridal, you know, stores that are small businesses, dress stores, boutiques. I mean, there's just, there's so many, you guys, there is so many, um, gosh, there's consignment shops. Um, what are some other places that I like? Um, gosh, Cheryl, can you think of any other like small ones that I'm thinking like not coffee shops? Like yeah, I, I have other one in a tea house, a local tea house, okay. um, a dry cleaner, um, a fish store. 
Like, I mean, they're all locally <laughs> owned awesome. though. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's awesome. You know? And so here's the thing. If you're thinking like, wow, I would have never thought about, it. think about it this way. Everybody has skin. So your, your target community is people who have skin. Okay. So I go into pet stores to get food, but I also have skin. So I may be there for my pet, but if I see a jar, that's like pampering session or something, you better bet I'm going to enter because who doesn't want a pampering session? And if it's free, it's for me, right? We always say that. So there's a lot of people that think that. So, okay. So th those would be my tips as far as locations go. Um, when I drop something off, it's super simple, you guys. So I'm just like, hi, I, you know, my name is Tanya. I am giving away whatever you're giving away. You're, if you're giving away a hundred facials, if you're giving away, um, you know, like for the month of February, I was like, you know, I'm giving away um, beauty sessions for the women in the month of February. And I was wondering if I could leave this here for your customers or your clients to enter, you know, so you could say, I'm, you know, I, I have a promotion this month, or I have a promotion going on where I am giving, you know, 50 beauty sessions away or pampering sessions or facials away. And I would love to leave this here for your customers or your clients to enter. Would that be okay? So it's very simple. Um, sometimes I'll ask you, oh, well, that's great. Where are you located? Well, I, you know, I work out of my home studio and I tell them like I'm off of Lock Hill, Selma and Hebner, and I have my home studio there. Some, you know, is there a certain company you're with? I'm like, yeah, I'm with Mary Kay. You know, and so if they ask you questions, you know the answers, right? Where do you hold your appointments out of? Your home studio. It sounds professional, okay? Don't say, oh, my garage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have people come to my garage. Okay. That's a little creepy. So maybe, maybe think of a cute name. Like I love to call mine, my pink home studio. I have no sign that says pink home studio anywhere near my house, but it is my pink home studio because when you walk in, it really is like a pink home studio in there to me. And so think of something fun if that you want to call your location of business. Okay. Um, and so, and that's pretty much it. That's all I say. And they say, sure. Um, I, I tend to place my jar in a area that I know people are going to see it. Okay. So I like to do it like by the cash register or somewhere where they're checking out or somewhere where they're checking in. Um, so, you know, in other words, don't go put it in the bathroom because they may not ever go to that bathroom. And, you know, if don't try to tuck it in a corner where no one will ever see it. So also you want to just kind of be aware of like, okay, what's a great location and where do people see it when they're checking in or out, right? Another thing you also want to be mindful of is, you know, um, there are other consultants working their businesses. So you have to scan the area like a detective. You have to act like you have these like glasses on that scan, right? And you have to look and see like, does anybody else already have their jar, their box, their bowl here? We are the only ones who do this, you guys. There's no other company that I've ever encountered that does this. So if I see something pink and frilly and pretty and glittery and bedazzled and sparkled in, I know that's a Mary Kay box. I probably don't even have to read the box. I know it's a Mary Kay box. So if I see something, I just simply say, oh, I see that someone already has their box here. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And I just walk out and they probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but I, you know, I'm basically just walk in and say like, oh, I see someone has, has already um, came by. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And I walk away. You never want to put your jar with another Mary Kay Beauty consultant. It's just not a good look for you. Okay. Not at all. It's not a good look. And she's doing the same work you're doing. So out of respect for each other and the golden rules, we do not do that, right? In fact, I say, awesome. That's, I should be seeing a ton of jars. And unfortunately, I don't. Unfortunately, you guys, I have jars everywhere. And I have maybe walked into a handful of businesses where there was already something there. That tells me that a lot of people don't work their businesses to that capacity to where they are wanting to generate leads, or maybe they're wanting to, but they never do it. So that tells me there's a lot of room for you guys to put your jars out. There's a lot of places for you to put your jars out. And you'll, and you'll see that as you start doing this 
method, you're going to start to see that like, wow, there's no jar here. There's no nothing here. Oh, cool. Okay. Awesome. But you're going to see it more and more and more. And you're going to realize there's a lot of ground I can cover that has not been taken. Okay. Um, other helpful tips is grab the business card where you leave your jar. Okay. I did not used to do this and I totally would forget where I had my jars. And probably some of my jars are out there and they're probably sitting there or gotten thrown by now because I just spaced that I left them there. So you get smarter, you know, as you do things and you find systems. Um, and so grab the business card so you know exactly where you have your jars dropped at. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, when I pick up my leads, I like to write the, the date and the name of the business where I picked them up from. So if you have 10 names, in there, I will just quickly in my car write the name of the business, um, or at least write on one of them, and then paper clip that pile, and then I can go home and finish writing on the rest of the nine of them. But I like to put the date on the back because that holds me accountable for how long have I been holding on to this name and refusing to reach out. Yeah, I know. Ouch, right? Because sometimes it could say like January 29th, and you're May 5th. Oh, I've had this name since January 29th. I am hoping she remembers she entered this jar. She's probably not going to. I'm going to have to remind her and probably send a picture of the jar. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff I'm going to need to do to refresh this gal's memory, right? Okay, so I always like to write the date the date because that holds me accountable. Um, and that is pretty much the gist of it for the jars. It's very simple. They're doing the work for you while you are living your life. I mean, that's pretty beautiful, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I get really excited. You could see I have color in my face now. I was looking pale, but now I'm like, have all this color because it brings life um, to our businesses knowing that like, gosh, I don't even have to know a single person. I just got to get these jars to, you know, put out there. Okay, so let's talk about another way that I like to do things. Cheryl, did I cover everything on the jars that you could think of? You did. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the next thing is skincare surveys. Okay, so you never want to put all your eggs in one basket, right? You don't want to just depend on your hundred names contact list. You don't want to just depend on jars. The more you can do like two to three things, the better off you're going to be, okay? Um, and it also lessens the discouragement level. And you'll also notice that your emotional cycle is a little bit more under control, when you have multiple things to work with, rather than like, I'm going to wait for these names. This is all I have going for me. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to hope and I'm going to hope. And oh, there was no names. Okay. All right. Maybe next week. Right. But if you have multiple streams going on, then you're going to be more hopeful. Right. And so I would recommend, um, you know, and we're going to talk about this more, but don't just do one is what I'm trying to say. So skincare surveys are great, whether you're doing it intentionally or unintentionally. So what does that mean? So a skincare survey, and I'm going to share a screen with you and show you what that looks like. Okay. Can you guys see this, Cheryl? Yeah. Okay. So skincare survey, I have four surveys on one sheet. I print them out. I cut them out. This is pampering women in the community. So if I am intentionally working with skincare surveys, I am targeting businesses. So I am thinking like, okay, you know, think of the places you already give your business to. So your dental office, maybe, you know, maybe um, your hair salon or like whatever, wherever places that you're already doing business with. And then I expand out and do other businesses. So I don't just do my dental office. I think I look at all the dental offices within 15 minutes of me. I, I look at all um, like some medical facilities, um, I, I doctors, I mean, I'm like pretty much just like, okay, who has, you know, women working there that are sitting in the front and they're checking patients in and um, that I can go in really quick and do pampering women in the community. You have apartment complex complexes where you go in and the leasing agents are sitting there. Like there's so many different places. Um, and I will go in and I will say, hi, my name is Tanya. I am with Mary Kay. I am pampering women in the community. Um, and I have a goodie bag for you. 
Um, and they, you know, their eyes poke up because they're like, goodie bag pampering. Okay. This sounds interesting. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, you know, I have these little goodie bags put together, very simple, my business card, a piece of candy, something that won't melt. Um, and then a sample, it could be a lip gloss sample. It could be a cheek color sample. It really, I mean, a mascara sample, like, you know, be smart with your money because here's another thing, you guys, section two does not count towards your earning your accessory from the company, doesn't count towards star, doesn't count towards your monthly production, it doesn't count towards keeping you active. So what I'm trying to say is don't spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on samples, okay? So when you're looking at your samples, think of things that are smart and maybe you get a little bit more quantity with them as well. So like a strip of lip glosses, you know, you're going to get probably like six, I think in those six or eight, I can't remember, um, a <clears> dollar <throat> 50 or something like that. Okay. So that makes sense. Right. So I can put in some goodie bags and, um, and then I can give them the goodie bag and then I can, you know, say, you know, can you please fill this form out for me? This is, um, how I will get in contact with you for the pampering women in community. Um, I am giving free beauty sessions, free pampering sessions, free facial sessions, free, um, you know, hearts and love sessions, you know, maybe it's like February, you know, free, uh, lucky sessions for the month of March, you know, or whatever, you know, just whatever you want to name it, they'll be excited about it. The end result is the same, right? You're getting them around the kitchen table, they're placing product on their face, and you're sharing the opportunity with them. And you're sharing the Mary Kay product with them and you're sharing yourself with them. So the end result is the same. So they fill this out, you hand them their goodie bag. And then this is how you can get in touch with them, right? And so it has the spot for your name, cell phone, um, the workplace. That would be where, where did you walk into? Was it Dr. Russell's orthodontics, you know, like, or whatever it is, they'll, they'll put that there, which is great. If they leave it blank, you can write in there um, where that name came from. So when you're reaching out to them, and you're saying, you know, hi, Jessica, this is Tanya. Um, I was in Dr. Russell's orthodontics, you know, yesterday, and I'm so excited. I would love to get you scheduled for your pampering session. And I see here that you circled a weekday would work better for you. Um, and then you can just kind of go through your thing, which, you know, if you have questions on, on what to say, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and they know what they're getting because they see it on this form. And then if they have any questions, you can go into that too. But that's intentionally, okay? So intentionally, if I'm going into a business, I am going to have the Mary Kay image. I'm going to be in a skirt. I'm going to be in a nice shirt, um, comfortable shoes because I'm going in and out of businesses. I'm going to have my pampering women in the community surveys, um, whether it's in a little bag, in a basket with my goodie bags, I am prepared, I am walking in, I am intentionally going in there to get names, okay? Unintentionally. So you can use these if you are out and about, and let's just say you go to your favorite coffee shop and you're seeing your, your coffee gal every time, or you're going to the bank and she sees you every Friday because you're either pulling money out or you're putting money in or Whatever you're doing, you're at Target, you're getting stuff that you need for your home and you're at checkout, you know, you're at the grocery store, you know, all the things that you are doing, all the things that you are already doing. Think of the people who are there checking you out and taking care of you. You could say the same thing. Hey, you know, I don't know if you've ever gotten a goodie bag before, but I do have one for you. And I am pampering women in the community. Um, and I would love to treat you to a pampering session and also give you this goodie bag because you're doing such an amazing job. And I appreciate you and all the help you've given us. It could be your waitress, you know, anybody. Um, and then you're going to ask her, you know, could you please fill this out? This is how I'll get in contact with you. Plus, this is your entry to get your free pampering session with me. And then she fills that out and you're like, thank you so much. You know, this has been so awesome. Here's your goodie bag. I cannot wait um, to talk to you more about this. I'll be reaching out in the next couple of days. So you're setting that expectation that and she's knowing you are going, she's going to hear from you basically is the expectation you're setting. So that's unintentionally. So I might be in jeans 
and a cute t-shirt. I might be in shorts and a summer shirt. I might, you know, cause I'm doing my everyday thing. I'm, I'm running my errands, but I'm also seizing the opportunity as I'm running my errands, right? I'm not sitting there like, oh shoot, it's not my power hour. Oh, but she was so cute and so sweet, but it's not my power hour. I didn't schedule this in my Mary Kay power hour. So there's no way I could talk to this gal. Oh, well. And then I walk away. No, 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 no. I'm like, okay, she's cute. I want to be in her space. I know she wants to be in my space and you're going to open that up for her. Okay. Now, if someone says, no, thank you. I say that is totally okay. You've been awesome anyways. And thank you so much for your time. And that's that. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. It's not enough to affect my life. The sky didn't fall. And I still leave with my groceries. So it really is kind of like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Um, have you guys ever heard that too? That um, rejection is God's protection. Have you ever heard that? If you haven't heard that, write that down. Rejection is God's protection. That is telling you that God clearly is not going to connect you two together. He's not going to. And if he is going to, it is going to be smooth sailing. She is going to give you her information. You're going to reach out to her. She's going to book the appointment. She's going to show up. She's going to be in your space. That is all of God's plan and timing. Those are like, to me, the most beautiful moments because I know that was all in his work. And anything that he did not allow to go further is him saying, you're my daughter and she's my daughter, but for some reason, not now. And I say, I trust you. I absolutely 100% trust you. And I move about my life, okay? That takes practice, you guys. Because in the beginning, it was like, nobody wants to bug with me. Nobody's calling me back. They don't pick up their phone. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants this stuff. Oh, by the way, I need to reorder my stuff too. <laughs> you know? So that is how you guys kind of work through those emotions. And that's a whole other training. But what why I want to tell you that right now is that those are going to be things um, that will happen. And you've got to go back to trusting and waiting, which is not very easy for us women sometimes, right? It's not easy to wait. Okay. Okay. So that is intentional, intentionally and unintentionally how I use skincare surveys. And those are going to be part of resources that will be sent to you. And your director will send you those. It might be in the weekly email. It might be in an email. It might be in your unit group. Um, so just be looking out for how your director is going to be sending these resources. Okay. Um, for that. Okay. Cheryl, do you want to show the bag? and show um, how you have your skincare surveys ready to yes. go and set yes. up. So this is a little bag that I have in my purse at all times. And it just allows me to be prepared with what I need. Now I don't have my goodie bags in here right now, but at least, again, you don't have to be perfect to move forward, right? At least I have the printed surveys, um, a stack of them. I have a pin and I do have my business cards as well, okay? Um, at least I can do that for now. And when I get a little more prepared, I can put my goodie bags in there. But when the opportunity arises, whether I'm at a networking event or at the grocery store, intentional, unintentional, I love the, you know, um, the difference of the two, I am prepared. So all you have to do is prepare yourself for the opportunity to seize that opportunity that you don't ha have to say, oh, shoot, that passed me by because I wasn't prepared and I wasn't ready. Okay. Um, yeah. What I'll say about the skincare surveys, some of you will be so good at just getting somebody's phone number because you are extroverted, you're bubbly, you love talking to people, like it's your jam, right? You don't need a tool like the skincare survey. Others are going to be like myself, a little bit more introverted, a little bit more um, intimidated by other people. And I need, I just needed a tool. I needed something to hand them that gave me like a cushion of, let me 
ask for her phone number, but let me have a tool to do that. And so if that's you, these skincare surveys are going to be fantastic. If you are already so good at like, oh my gosh, let me get your number. This is going to be so fun. I can't wait to get together. Then just go with that. Like the simpler, the better, but I would have never done that had I not had a tool to be able to do that. So again, this is a tool and a resource and we will send it to you. Um, and I recommend just being prepared. Okay. Um, the other thing I would say just to add on real quick before we move on is you in, in the intentional part of this. So we talked about intentionally just going into businesses. You will see um, some other Mary Kay consultants and directors that do something called office of the week. So you can very intentionally choose an office or a business, call them ahead of time and say, hi, this is Cheryl Romero. I'm a, um, I'm an independent beauty consultant with Mary Kay. And I choose an office every single week to come in and give all of the women goodie bags and offer, um, you know, a free pampering session. I have chosen your office this week. Would it be okay if I came by on Friday with all of these goodie bags for them? Then you have this featured office of the week. You can take in donuts. You can do whatever you want and you can do multiple offices of the week. So that's another way of intentionally going out there and doing office of the week to where they know you're coming and they're excited. You can do that or you can just walk into them, okay? You can also use these skincare surveys at restaurants. Maybe it's Valentine's Day, maybe it's Mother's Day. Maybe you have a contact at a local restaurant where you can have a table and you can give out carnations to the moms, to the, uh, to the women, to wh whatever excuse you wanna have, and you have them fill out these surveys. There's so many ways that you can use these surveys. Um, and so I just wanted to give you those couple of ideas, not to muddy the waters, but to just let you know that there are so many options. So Tanya, thank you. You did an excellent job yes. both on the jars Welcome. and on the surveys. So I will take you off spotlight so I can move on yep. to the next ones. And so again, we've talked about your sphere of influence. We've talked about jars or fish bowls or facial boxes in businesses. And we've talked about um, the skincare surveys intentionally, unintentionally, what you may hear the term of warm chattering. That's basically in the same category. Now we're going to move on to a broad category of networking. Okay. And that includes not only groups that you can be involved in, but also vendor table opportunities. And I'm going to talk to you for the next few minutes about those things, because from the very beginning of my business, and I've been in business for 15 years, um, and I had a very full schedule, full-time job for the first two and a half years of my business before I became a sales director. And this became my full-time job. And so I mastered which lead generation um, uh, streams would work best for me and my schedule and for my personality. And I um, have always, always done vendor tables um, and looked for those opportunities and um, when I had a little bit more time, then the networking really became a part of what I did and what I continue to do. So what does that look like? Let's start with just the broad term of networking, okay? So networking can be looked at in two different ways. Let's start with groups that have a um, common interest with what you're interested in that you join or that you're already involved in. This can be like church groups, um, you know, Bible study. Um, MOPS groups, that's mom of preschoolers. It could be a hiking group, a singles group, a whatever, like whatever matches what you do. It could be your gym, your workout class, your yoga class, your um, go out and, and walk on Saturday mornings group. There's so many things that you can involve yourself in because that comes natural to you and you want to have groups that share your common interest or you're gonna step outside your comfort zone to do the things with people that you like to do that have common interests so that you can meet people. So when you're involved in groups of a common interest, Bible study, mops groups, let's talk about those first because that looks different than the next type of networking that I'm gonna talk about, which is professional networking, okay? So when you're involved in groups, obviously you're gonna be around people. You're also going to be around like-minded people, people who have things in common with you. And so what you want to know about those groups is that is definitely an opportunity to add those people basically to your list, your sphere of influence list, as you get to know them. 
You don't want to walk into those situations or immediately utilize the situations that you're in as walking in as only the Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, okay? There is a fine line between me showing up as Cheryl and my true genuine self and them also knowing that I'm a beauty consultant with Mary Kay. And that timeline is a little bit different for your personality, for how close you are with the people that you're talking to. And when you make that transition of Cheryl to Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, and I would love to invite you to this event that I'm doing, or I would love to pamper you sometime. Um, would you like to come over and bring the kiddos and we can have a play date and play with some skincare and makeup? So what you want to do with groups like that is you want to transition those people from friendship and um, that common interest over into your business. And just like everything else, there are going to be people who are going to be interested, people who are not, and you're just working through that, okay? But you're also getting multiple cups filled in your life because you're um, enjoying what you're doing with those groups, and then you're also utilizing those groups in order to um, have the opportunity to meet people um, that are like you that you would enjoy introducing into your business. So that's the first way. Look for those types of things if you're not involved in anything. What do I like to do? And how can I get myself out there in the same things that I like to do to meet those people? Okay. Typically, those types of groups are going to be free. Where can you find those types of groups? Somewhere, you know, Facebook, Meetup, things like that, right? Or asking around to your friends or some people you know, hey, I'd love to be a part of a mom's group. Do you know any? Hey, what is your favorite Bible study around? Hey, what, um, I, you know, um, I saw that there was a cooking class. Do you want to go with me? I don't know what it is, but, you know, just kind of be open to those opportunities. The second tier of networking is professional networking. This is going to be, um, you know, professional business groups, uh, chamber of commerce. Um, there's so many to name. Um, I am in several of them. I have been for quite a while. Um, and these are different from the first type of networking groups that I talked about in the sense that when you join a professional networking group, you show up as Cheryl, Mary Kay Independent Beauty Consultant. I am there representing my business. Although the friendship in many women's group is the foundation of building our business, which is what is my favorite part of networking groups is the ones that are built upon creating connections with people first before business is involved. Because if you join groups where it's just business, 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 and it's just people shaking hands and passing out business cards, it's tough to break through to get a lot from your business. But when you're joining groups to where you get to connect with people and you get to have lunch and you get to know them as a person, that is my bread and butter. That is what I would recommend. It takes some visiting of groups and some trying some out to figure out which one of those. Because when you connect with people, and you sell yourself to them, it is very easy for them to say yes, that they would love to be involved in the next event or come over for a facial or do any of those, okay? But because it's a professional networking group and you're showing up at representing your Mary Kay business, that transition can be a whole lot faster than say the other type of group that you're involved in. Um, so don't let it just linger. Don't not show up to those groups as a representation of your Mary Kay business, okay? And so um, where do you find those types of groups? Same thing. You can look on Meetup, um, Facebook events page. You can search for things there. Um, Eventbrite is a great place to look for different things going on in community. Uh, church bulletins, um, banners of like different groups, different opportunities. Uh, community events, or just asking around, hey, I'm looking to join some business networking groups. Does anybody have any suggestions? You ask people who are also in business. If you know a realtor, if you know a mortgage uh, gal, if you know um, all of these people who are always networking, get in with them and be like, what are you doing? Can I come with you? Right? Um, that's what I do. I use the ladies in my one networking group and we go network other groups and we do it together so we're not scared, right? We're just like the support system and we have a great time. So I've always done that. Um, typically, not all, but a lot of these groups do have a cost to them. So choose the ones that are cost effective to you. And if you are going to pay to be a, a member of a professional networking group, work it. Get your money's worth out of it. 
And I know that there are some of you that are watching, and I know Kathy's shaking her head, um, that it is worth it. But if you're not going to work it to its, its greatest potential, um, you know, think about that. Plus, professional networking groups, that's a tax write-off, right, as a membership of that, because you're representing Mary. So that's a great thing, too. Um, and I have met some fabulous people through all of the great uh, groups that I have been a part of. So um, let's transition that into vendor opportunities. These can kind of go together because as you're networking in groups and you're part of professional organizations, opportunities are going to pop up, right? Somebody's going to have um, a mixer and they want, um, they want the women that have businesses to like, or anybody that has a business to have a table there. Um, and so once you're starting to get yourself out there, you're, these things are going to kind of be at the forefront, but that's not always the case. There's so many other ways. If you're like networking is not my thing. I love jars. I love skincare surveys. I love all that, but I'm not, I don't have the time, nor is that my choice of lead generation. There are many other ways that you can find vendor table opportunities. Now you might be thinking, what the heck is a vendor table opportunity? So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to give you an idea of what this looks like. And I'm going to give you some tips on where to find them, what to look for, what we can, what we can't do, all of that kind of stuff. So I've got a couple different pictures to share just to give you an idea, especially if you're a new consultant, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. So I have no idea who this director is, but she's got a really cute table. She's dressed for the opportunity. She's got a clipboard and she looks happy, right? She is at some sort of event. I have no idea what event she is at, but she has a table that is representing her business. Okay, let me go to the next one. I don't think I can just scroll through these. I have to, I apologize, stop, share, and bring them up. Here is another Mary Kay sales director that is at a wedding event. Okay, she is looking the part. She's got her Mary Kay beauty coat on and she has a beautiful yet simple display for her Mary Kay table. And she is marketing herself to brides. That's a great opportunity as well. This one is, without permission, Kathy. I apologize. This is Kathy's picture. Um, Kathy had a table somewhere. I have no idea where it was, but look how fabulous it is. Beautiful display. She is marketing her Mary Kay business wherever she was, right? Maybe the chamber. Maybe she's all over the place, you guys. And so I just um, homed your Facebook page looking for that. So thank you, Kathy. So that's what it looks like, okay? Where can we have those types of tables? Um, Tanya just recently had one, I believe, at a boutique for a Valentine's Day event. She actually went in to drop off a jar at a boutique and they were like, hey, yeah, you can leave it. But also we're having this event. We would love to have you come and have a table. Um, and so maybe it's a consignment shop. Maybe it's a boutique. Um, look out for opportunities like that. You just have to ask. I always say the answer is always no, unless you ask, right? You can go into a boutique with a jar and also say, hey, do you ever have any events that I could like come for a Saturday and have like a pop-up table, right? Um, so um, in other businesses is one opportunity. At networking events like chamber events or, um, you know, professional events like that is another opportunity. Um, wedding shows can be extremely expensive. I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, but things like that, if it's cost effective, and I would say if, if, if there's a price tag on it, consider sharing it with your sister consultants if you have any available in your area to be able to share that cost and share the leads from that. Um, but you're gonna meet some good quality leads from things like that. Um, craft fairs, um, community events, um, all kinds of different things. And so again, your eyes want to be open. Where can I get myself behind a table to be able to have people walk over to me intrigued by what I have to offer? And guess what you're going to use? You're going to use the skincare survey for them to fill out. They can enter for a gift basket. They can just enter for the pampering session. You can have some samples. You can have some candy. I have found that samples and candy bring the women over, right? So again, if you've got the bubbly personality to talk to anybody and just attract those people to you, you probably don't need the candy or the samples. If you're a little bit more reserved like I am, you're going to want the goods, right? You're going to want the candy because if they don't come, their kids are going to come and they're going to bring them. Mom, look, come over here. There's candy over here, right? Um, and you're going to want to, hey, come over, grab some candy, grab a sample. They're in your space. That's where I can work my magic. 
hey, I'm giving away 100 free facials today. I would love for you to fill that out or um, grand prize is going to get this $100 gift basket, whatever that looks like, okay? So when you are doing things like this, number one, and we're gonna talk about um, image over all of these things. So I actually won't get into that because Tani's gonna cover that in a minute, but because this is a very intentional way of working your business. Um, but if you have any questions legally on what we can do, I'm going to uh, cover the just the brief overview of what we can and can't do at things like this. But in our legal ease guidelines on Mary Kay in touch, you can dive into that a little bit deeper if you have very specific questions and your director can also answer those questions for you. But a, a table in a public space, meaning, you know, all of those things that I talked about, we do not sell product. Our job is, and, and we're not legally able to sell product at things like that. This is a lead generation opportunity. We have a beautiful display, but our job is to collect the names in order to book the appointments, to have them in our personal space, in our home or their home, the way our direct selling association is meant for our business to work. And then you can sell the product from there. So again, that's why this isn't the lead generation opportunity, not the selling opportunity, because it leads to the appointments, okay? So um, whenever you have an opportunity, just know, cute display, simple, and that you were there to collect leads, not sell product, all right? And so um, again, just keep your eye out for things like this. Around the holidays, you're gonna see banners everywhere for craft shows and community events and all that, but outside, of the holidays, um, all of the things that I already talked about is an opportunity to find those um, uh, those those vendor booth opportunities. So, um, Tanya, if I missed anything on that, please pop in and let me know. If not, I'm going to move on to our last two subjects that we have before um, stopping our recording and letting you guys answer question, ask questions, and all of that. <clears throat> okay. So we've talked about sphere of influence, lead jars skincare surveys, networking groups, vendor booths. And you know what, if you already are doing other lead generations that we didn't cover, great. But those are the basics. Those are what we can do day in and day out to be aware of, to really, again, make our business move forward. Um, the reason that Tanya had said prior, you don't just wanna have one thing going for you is because in all of the lead generation, this business is not magical, it is mathematical. Meaning that I wanna set your expectations correctly for how many leads do I need to generate in order to move forward in my business? You need to have the right expectations based on the law of averages. And the law of averages says more equals more. More equals more. So if you have three jar leads, that week, the likelihood of you scheduling an appointment with one of those three people is very low. You may have heard this saying, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it for you on this. People will disappoint you, but numbers never lie. People will disappoint you, but numbers will never lie. What does that mean? Each individual person is very unpredictable. Are they going to say yes? Are they going to say no? Are they going to show up? Are they going to ghost me? Are they going to thought whatever, you know? People in the individual sense are unpredictable. People as a mass, extremely predictable. Again, back to the law of averages. When you're working with masses of people, you know that the numbers are going to work out. So I want you to set yourself up for success by having enough leads to allow you to be able to book the amount of appointments that you want. On average, this is just from my experience, and it also depends on how you're generating your leads. Let's talk about like cold leads versus hot leads. I'm sure you've kind of heard like, well, you know, cold lead, cold calls, you know, warm calls. It's like, how, how did you meet these people? If you spent 20 minutes in the grocery store line having a conversation with her and you guys were like best friends at the end of it, like that is a hot lead. She is going to remember you and be excited to get together with you. That one's going to be a higher likelihood 
of her wanting to be in your space than somebody that maybe just filled out a survey at the office of the week and barely created a relationship with you. So how did you meet that person? How in depth did you create that connection? And then that will also affect your averages on how many, how, you know, your app. So I'm going to just give you like one in five, between one and five and one in 10, you can expect to book an appointment with you. That's just from my experience. So if you have 50 jar leads, you are going to have like, I don't know, like five to 10 appointments maybe, but it takes 50 to get there. If you have five to 10 jar leads, do not expect to get five appointments from those five to 10 jar leads. More equals more. Produce more so that it takes care of your emotions and you know that those numbers are gonna work out, all right? So what that means is that place 10 to 15 jars, not just one. Collect 50 surveys, not just two. Have, you know, um, groups that you are involved in, um, you know, more than like, one, you know, once every quarter or something. More equals more. So set your expectations so that you're not disappointed by each individual person that you are um, more working off of the predictability of the masses, okay? Um, also, the last thing I will say with that expectations, and we're not talking about booking tonight, but it's going to lead into that, you guys. So again, this Focus Forward series is step by step by step. Some of you already know what to do because you've been in this business for a while. Some of you are brand new and have no idea. If I have a name, what do I do next? Don't worry. Don't put the cart before the horse. We're going to get there. But when it comes to expectations and the law of averages, also what's going to go along with that is you can't just contact all these people once and be like, okay, those are my attempts. Does not work that way. At least five booking attempts. Set yourself up with the expectations that you are going to be, you are putting control in your professionalism. It is your job to follow up, to be uh, pleasantly persistent and professional until they tell you no, you continue to try. Okay. So those are, that's the law of averages and expectations when it comes to generating leads, generate enough to get where you want to be. Okay. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to hand it back over to Tanya for our last few notes. Then we're going to stop the recording. But if you're on live, don't go anywhere because we are not done with you guys. Okay, guys. So really the last thing is going to be like attitude, right? Attitude. So whenever you guys are walking into businesses, have a smile on your face. Don't look so flustered, right? From getting out of your car. Like, don't look like the, the whole world is so hard and on your shoulders and you're coming in and like half your hair is frizzled everywhere and you have like your pencils coming out. And you're just like, hi, I'm just here going through all these businesses and I'm so exhausted, but I just really want you to fill out this form for me and have a good day. How's your day? Okay. So just know when you walk in, like, even if you have to take a few breaths before you open that door, because you have been going into businesses, right? I mean, in and out of car, in and out of your car, take a deep breath, walk in. Okay. Get yourself together. Having a great positive attitude, a smile on your face, looking friendly, you know, um, looking like you love what you do, right? Because you should, even if you're nervous, it should be a good nervous because you know, you're growing. Um, you're growing your confidence, you know, your image. How do you, how are you walking into these businesses? You know, you are a beauty consultant. You are a professional beauty consultant who has her independent business. You're an independent contractor. You know, this is your image as well as Mary Kay's image, but through you is what they see about Mary Kay. When they meet you, they're thinking Mary Kay, right? Because they may never have any other encounter with Mary Kay unless it, it could just be you, okay? So having just that good image, wearing a skirt, if you're doing vendor tables, if you're doing booths, if you're doing um, anything where you're representing Mary Kay and your company, you are in a dress and a skirt, you are suited up, you are sharp. And you are ready to go with a positive attitude um, to be able to generate leads 
for yourself and for your business, okay? If you are running errands, it's okay if you're in jeans and tennis shoes, okay? And if that moment approaches and you have that opportunity, that's okay. You still have a positive attitude. Okay. And I'm sure you're still carrying around the image. You may not be in a skirt, but you still have that image, right? Of, of what Mary Kay is to you and your business. So having that attitude and that image, whether it's intentional or unintentional when you're working your business is going to be something that I want you to keep at the top. Okay. When you're having your facials, when you're doing any of your appointments where you're, you know, you can wear your beauty coat. If you don't have a beauty coat, that's okay. Dress or skirt. Okay. That is our image in Mary Kay. And we're so proud um, of that. And everything just, you look so good. You know, you just look so good and on top of it and you look sharp. Okay. Um, Cheryl, did I miss anything on like image or attitude? It's pretty simple, right? Treat others the way you would want to be treated pretty simple. Okay. No matter how they treat you, just you continue to treat others the way you would want to be treated. Okay, guys, I'm going to, um, or Cheryl's actually pulling up the workbook. So just as a reminder, you guys want to fill this out. This kind of keeps you on track. You should have your secret word here for the week. Um, filling out your monthly IPA tracking sheet. So that's like a weekly thing. Every single week you are doing your IPAs, that doesn't change. You want to continue to fill out your contact list, continue working on that. And we have a lead generation worksheet for you. And Cheryl's going to show you what that looks like. So this is a new assignment for this week. So IPA tracking sheet will be every single week, all the time. Your contact list, you're going to keep building and building and building off of that. And this lead generation sheet right here, this is your plan. So you're gonna circle two to three ways that you're gonna be generating leads. Is it lead jars? Is it networking groups or vendor booths? Is it skincare surveys? Is it sphere of influence? Refer back to your contact list of hundred contacts. So you're gonna circle two to three ways that you are going to be working um, your lead generation. Now, if you choose jars, there is a spot for you right here to put the locations where your jars are. So the names of the businesses, there's 15 spots. Hint, 15 is a good number to have out, okay? So your goal is like, okay, I'm gonna get all those 15, um, you know, spots filled. Um, another great hint is always have your jars in your car. Have them in your trunk because even if you're driving home from work, you might see a business and be like, oh, there's a business right there. I'm just going to go run in and, and do X, Y, and Z. So always have them with you um, instead of like, oh, shoot, they're at home. God, that would have been a good spot. Okay, so always think of that too. Networking groups you're already involved in. So think of things that you're already involved in. So, you know, do you have certain groups that you're already like doing things? Is it like Taco Tuesday group? you know, and you get together with the same people for Taco Tuesdays or whatnot. So what groups are you already involved in that you can continue to, um, you know, generate some appointments from that, right? Because you're building relationships. And then what are some new groups that you can get involved in? And so there's some spots there um, if you are picking networking as one of them. Now, skincare surveys. Color in a circle for every survey you get filled out, okay? So as you are going through this week and you're doing your everyday thing, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, you um, every time you get a skincare survey filled out, you're going to circle in one of those circles, okay? You're just going to color them in. And so this is going to be your tracking for your lead generating um, plan. This is your plan. And then um, Cheryl's going to show the IPA tracking sheet again. This is what your IPA tracking sheet looks like. So this is something that you turn in every single week as well. Don't forget to turn in your homework, you guys. So that way you can also get your recognition on that. And then um, the 100 contact list, if you keep scrolling up here in your workbook, you will see here that your contact list is right there as well. All right. Okay, so now... Let's see here. Where am I at, Cheryl? Okay, perfect. Sorry. Sorry, I was just, I had so many buttons to push on that. That is excellent. So you guys, um, again, I just want to encourage you that this is a step-by-step -step series. The workbook is made to be step-by-step. -step. Does that mean you can't work ahead? No, but you don't need to. You don't need to eat the whole elephant at once. This is a bite by bite by bite. 
And so we'll continue to review that workbook so that you can build on each step as we go along with these weeks. And I promise when you are present, when you are working on these things, that is when you're going to see that momentum forward. I will also want to encourage you and recognize the fact that not every week is going to be perfect. And Tanya mentioned this, and it might have been before we started the recording too. But um, let's just say that one week you don't quite get all of your assignments done. Okay. You work on stuff. Don't feel like that week is a loss. We want you to keep on top of things so you don't feel behind. Once you start to feel behind, you might feel a little more overwhelmed. Week by week, do your very best to complete what we are going through. But if you don't get something done, not all is lost because not only are you getting recognition um, each week, but you are for the month, you can take all of your monthly assignments, turn them in by the fifth of the following month, and you will still receive your monthly price. Am I saying right now to wait until April 4th to do all these assignments? Goodness gracious, no, please do not do that. But I'm giving you just a little bit of grace so that you know that you can still do these things. We will review them week in and week out so that you know how this builds on top of each other. This is a process. It's a cycle. And if you, um, if this is a first time learning the cycle, just know we are walking you through it step by step, week by week. And so if you're watching the recording, just to have, you know, have faith that we are um, not just throwing you to the wolves and saying, good luck, let us know how it goes, go generate some leads and then, okay, facial them, have a great time. No, 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 no. That's coming, mm -hmm. coming, coming. Okay. And so with that, I am going to stop the recording unless Tanya, I forgot something, but we're going to talk with those that are live with us real quick. So you guys don't go anywhere, but those watching the recording, thank you for joining us. Make sure you know your secret word. Make sure that you turn in your homework as well.